Hello everyone, I'm Mabumi no Kamo. Nice to meet you all. Today, I'll be explaining how to upgrade and newly install FFmpeg. Since it's been over a year since I installed it, I decided to make this video. Rather than just showing a simple installation method, I will also explain some advanced details for better learning. And I will provide a script that can automatically handle the installation. Let's get started. Hello, I'm interested in the script since FFmpeg gets frequent upgrades. Well, if it isn't the Kayama-san, let's learn together. First, let me point out a common installation mistake. Downloading the source files. On the official page, the source files are prominently displayed at the top, as shown in the video. If you need the Windows executable files, you will need to scroll down a bit. Oh, so that's how it is. Actually, I used to download the source files and compile them. It was quite confusing at first. It was quite confusing at first well, that must have been a good learning experience. So, what's the plan for the scenario from here? Yes, I will briefly explain the manual installation process and the importance of Epsonpeg. And I will demonstrate how this whole process can be easily automated with a script. I want to cover not just the installation, but also the reasoning behind it. That's well thought out. All right, got it. Please go ahead and begin. Sai, what a bossy old man. Anyway, I will extract the demoed files to an easy to find location. In the video, I have arranged them like this. Huh, looking closely, it is not such a simple folder structure after all. Well, never mind. The important point here is to navigate into the bin folder first. It's helpful to, to copy this address too. Let's check the address once. Now the address is clear. Next, we paste this in the usual location, right? Yes, that's correct. First, open this box and click the Environment Variables button under Advanced Settings. In the System Variables section, find Path, select New, and add the address we copied earlier. With this setting, you can use FFmpeg from any folder. So when apps don't work, it's often because these environment variables aren't set up properly. Yes, that's right. Without setting the path in Windows environment variables, you could only use commands when you are in the directory containing the program's executable files. But the version check worked properly. Now, even though we just installed it, let's remove it. The process is very simple. Just delete the FFmpeg folder. Killing two birds with one stone by showing the uninstall process in the video. Sure. Now let's check the environment variables. Even after deleting the folder, the environment variables remain. While it won't cause problems if you leave them, feel free to remove them if you prefer. Many apps don't automatically remove their environment variables when uninstalled. I wonder why that is. That's just plain negligence, obviously. Hey old man! Don't make such careless statements! While it can be due to the developer oversight, in some cases, there are reasons why environment variables might remain after uninstallation. Ideally, all related files and settings should be removed during uninstallation, as shown in the video. Actually, I am contradicting what I said earlier, but this can sometimes lead to unexpected behavior. Now that we understand the manual installation process, I will introduce a script that automates this entire workflow. First, let's launch PowerShell with administrator privileges. May I ask a question? We're going to run the script after removing FFmpeg, but would it cause problems if we run it without removing it first? Ah, I see what you are asking. I recommend removing it first. When FFmpeg is installed in multiple folders and each is registered in environment variables, situations like those shown in the video can occur. 
the environment variables contain an ordered list that determines where to look for executable commands. This list is searched from top to bottom. In Windows, the Environment Variable Settings screen shows the paths where FFmpeg is installed. The system prioritizes items higher up in this list. You kids might not have been around, but this search order system has been around since the MS-DOS era. As expected from the old timer. So in the settings screen, we can change the order by selecting the path and clicking the up or down buttons. Yes, exactly. Now let's continue where we left off. Just copy and paste the following code into Notepad. Don't worry about understanding it all. When I provide it, it will already be in file format, so don't worry. If you want to change the installation location, you can modify the file contents. This is really helpful, so we don't need to do this work ourselves now. It's available on GitHub, right? Yes, while well, I am explaining it in the video for demonstration purposes, this content is saved as a PowerShell script file. Now that it's saved, I will navigate to where the file is located. Let me just verify that the file exists in save folder, just to be sure. Yes, it's there. Let's move on to the next step. Here is an important, you need to temporarily change the script execution policy for just the current session. This is a temporary change and will not break anything or cause any security risks so you can safely approve it. Now that we are ready, let's run the script we prepared earlier. What it does is automatically download the FISES and uh, set up the environment variables. It will be done soon. Oops, we got an error. That, that's strange. This was just a mistake in the script. We shall get. I'm so sorry. Just a moment, please. Clapping congratulations. I'm so relieved inside. Thank you. Now, let's check the version. What? No error? No way. You fool. Nothing but errors since we started. You're troubling our viewers. We'll have to do some narration training later. I'm so sorry. Please go easy on me. We needed to either restart PowerShell or launch it in a new window. I always forget this part, no matter how many times I do it. Let's regroup and check the version one more time. Clapping congratulations. Still, these technical things rarely go smoothly, do they? Thanks! Now that we have successfully installed it, let's double check the installation location, just to be sure. Yes, everything looks good there. Next, let's verify that the environment variables were automatically added. These, these were. Yes, this looks good too. What a relief. Good job, both of you. I'm touched. Now, what happens when we run it again? I'm glad you asked, old man. I believe I have addressed that. And I will explain it next. Let me go through everything step by step. For subsequent runs, it automatically removes the old files and adds the new ones. I have tested it multiple times myself, and so far, I have not found any issues. Some applications require specific versions of FFmpeg, so please be careful in such cases. I hope this video has helped you understand how to work with multiple versions. So that wraps up our introduction to an easy FFmpeg installation method. Until we meet again, everyone! Goodbye.